Okay, so how do we determine which is the correct working end to use on any sextant? So you can go to any sextant, and as we talked about in class, what you want to do is pick a tooth in a sextant or in that quadrant and go to the distal surface. So I'm going to have my pointed tip on that distal surface of number 12. If my terminal shank is parallel to that tooth and the functional shank is over that tooth, that would be the correct working end. I'm going to go ahead and show the opposite end so that you would see when it's not the correct working end. The terminal shank is crossing that tooth. Now you might say, I can make it parallel, but if you make it parallel, that functional shank is no longer above that tooth number 12, and you could not work with the instrument in the back of a person's throat. So I'm going to flip my working end again, and there it is. Well, if this is the correct working end for tooth number 12, it's going to be the correct working end for all of these posterior teeth. And remember, we would start most posterior and work anteriorly. So I'm going to start on 14 just for filming purposes. And remember, we use one working end, but both lateral sides. And we're going to always start at the distal line angle. So I would lay down my tip, the lateral portion, one to two millimeters on the get ready zone. I'm going to close so that I can insert this. And then I am going to start walking. And I'm pivoting on my fulcrum and walking and rolling with my finger. I'm going halfway across that tooth into the call area. Now I'm going to come out. I'm going to quarter turn. Now I'm on the opposite lateral side. Here's my get ready zone. I'm going to pivot for insertion. I'm going to come up pretty horizontal. If I am horizontal in position for this insertion, notice my whole entire working end is parallel to that tooth. I can insert it. I can come behind that line angle so I don't miss it. Now you'll start to see me get a little oblique in my direction. So I'm walking across that tooth. I have a very light grasp and I'm walking and I'm rolling and I'm getting tall on that fulcrum and I'm going to go halfway across that tooth and now you see that my terminal shank is now parallel to that tooth. I'm going to go to the next tooth. I'm just going to take that opposite lateral side. There's my get ready zone. I'm going to insert and I'm going to be walking and rolling and getting tall on my fulcrum again halfway across. I'm going to come out, quarter turn, get ready zone, insert, and this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be repeating that from tooth to tooth. If you have to adjust your hand, that's okay to do. Get ready zone, close for insertion. I'm going to come out, quarter turn on the opposite lateral side. I like to do the premolars in a very horizontal position. I find it very comfortable to do. It's a very short, um, wa short walking length. It's, an, it's a narrow tooth. So now to do the uh, lingual aspect of this sextant, now I would have to flip my working end to the opposite working end. I would have to change my patient's head position, turn their head away from me, and I would have to use my mirror now so I can see that distal. And I would, I, I already flipped my instrument so I don't have to flip it again. And I'm going to look in my mirror and I'm going to go right to that distal. I'm going to close it for insertion and I'm going to walk, oh, I need to get on the maxillary arch. So I'm breaking our own rules about preclinic. So there's my fulcrum. And there we go. I'm going to be walking it this way. I'm going to come out. And if you need to adjust your hand, that's fine to get that quarter turn because this is a wide span now. Molars are wider. And I'm walking across that tooth and I'm getting taller on my fulcrum and my shank is parallel. And I'm going to bounce to the next tooth. Come out, quarter turn it insert. And we always go in the get ready zone for insertion because it's going to help you determine if you've got the correct adaptation to that tooth. So I just did the maxillary left sextant, posterior sextant. If I wanted to do the mandibular posterior left sextant, I would go through the same process. I would take my 
tip on a tooth distally, if my lower shank is parallel and the functional shank's up and over, that's the correct working end. This is a little harder to get this one completely parallel because of the maxillary teeth. But I can confirm this by taking the opposite working end, that lower shank is crossing the tooth, and I, e I can't even make that parallel. So this has to be my correct working end. And once again, I would start most posterior and I'm going to be in the get ready zone. I'm going to close so that pointed tip is looking into the sulcus. I'm going to walk it. I'm going to come out and quarter turn it. Get ready zone again. I'm going to insert it. And this is where you come around that line angle in a horizontal stroke. That way there you'll always find the calculus. And then I'm adjusting my hand ever so slightly. I'm coming up oblique now in my stroke direction. Light grasp. My strokes are probably two, three millimeters long, and I'm rolling, 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 and I'm coming, going halfway to that tooth. Your central groove is going to tell you that halfway mark. I don't want to keep walking all the way through. I'll poke the tissue. So you're going to stop there. You'll see it on this tooth as well. I'm here. I can insert this. I'm only going to go halfway. I'm going to come out, quarter turn that. And then I can go right to this tooth on the opposite lateral side. And now to do the lingual, I would have to flip to the opposite working end and change my clock position again. Now that's doing it sextant by sextant. I like 8 o'clock and some of you like 8 o'clock for that tongue as well. And I'm going to fulcrum. I'm kind of on that tooth I'm working on. Uh, we can't be here in reach with our 1112 because we need to have our middle finger on the shank so that we can feel the vibrations. It's especially important with this instrument. So I probably am going to be fulcruming on the tooth I'm working on, but my fulcrum's on the opposite side. So there's no real risk of me uh, being in the, zo the zone of getting hit by my instrument. So same thing here, get ready zone. I'm going to tilt for insertion and I'm rolling rolling, getting taller my fulcrum, my shank is getting parallel. I'm going to come out, quarter turn that, and now I'm going to get ready zone, insert it. I'm coming across that wide lingual span. I'm rolling, rolling, rolling. I'm anticipating that line angle, and I'm coming halfway up, halfway across that tooth. I'm going to stop right there. And then on this tooth here, same thing, get ready zone, close it so you can sneak that tip into the sulcus rolling, coming across. So we have to do a lot of pivoting when we're exploring. We're pivoting and we are walking and rolling all at the same time. So I've just completed the left side posterior sextants. I would go through the same for the right side. If my patient's head is in this position, I'll just go ahead and show the, I'll start with the lingual first. Well, it's really hard to figure out sometimes when you guys are first learning which is the correct working in. And if you're having a hard time, if we ask you to do like number three lingual, if, if it's easier for you to figure it out on the buccal surface, then remember you can do that. You can figure out the correct working in on a buccal surface. Help is this one because the lower shank's parallel then just flip it and now you got the correct one for the lingual. So if you're having trouble determining on the lingual, figure it out on the buckle and then just flip your instrument. And so now I'm going to start on number three here and here's the get ready zone. I'm closing. I can insert this and I'm walking and rolling. Very short walk on that distal. And then here I'm going to come up a little higher in my clock position and I'm coming across that lingual span, it's kind of a long span. And I'm completely looking in my mirror. Try to always work in your mirror. So I'm in this position. I just did those linguals. I'm in the 10 to 11 o'clock clock position. I've got the mandibular posterior section to do. 
I, rather than me change my position in the patient's head position, I'm just going to go ahead and do that lingual. And what I need to do is this. We talked about the opposite rule a little bit in class. I am on a maxillary posterior succinct surface away. Now I'm going to the mandibular right side sextant, but it's still the surface is away. It's only one opposite. I'm going from maxilla to mandible. If there's one opposite, I have to flip my working end. So I flip my working end, and now I'm good to go for this sextant right here. And I went a little too far back for the camera. The camera can only go see so far in, so. What I want Tommy to show is on my hand here. When I am inserting this on the distal line angle, notice where the handle is on my knuckle. It's between, you know, uh, knuckle two and knuckle three, essentially. As I walk this across, I am going to start to move this handle to the V of my hand. That's how I'm going to get that shank parallel. So remember, this has to be a light grass so you're able to move this handle back and forth. So I'll just show that again. I'm kind of horizontal in position. I can insert it. And as I approach that line angle, I just start to push that handle back into the V of my hand to get that shank tall. And then I'm going to repeat that for 29 and for 28. So it's a light grasp. Multi Sometimes we are multi-directional in our strokes. We might go horizontal, we might go oblique, and then we might come up vertical. So we didn't do the anterior sextants yet. So what I want to do is just pause for a moment, and then I'm going to do those anterior sextants.